Hi, I'm Art Kaplan. I'm at the NYU School of Medicine in the Division of Medical Ethics. Well, there's been a lot of arguing and battling over immigration in uh, recent weeks, and people are certainly paying close attention to the policy that uh, President Trump instituted and then withdrew about separating minor children from their parents, or at least the adults that they came with, to uh, the United States when they crossed the border. Some were seeking asylum, some were just trying to immigrate in uh, without uh, proper paperwork and so on. Uh, but nevertheless, we wound up having about 2,300 children at least that we know of, separated from adults, separated most likely from their families, put into detention uh, places. At one point, an old Walmart was being used. Tent cities were being constructed. And obviously, this is bad for the kids. There's no shortage of literature that says separation from your parent when you're an infant or a very young child can be traumatic, can be physically stressful, can be mentally stressful. It isn't a good thing to separate these kids from their families. Putting aside whether we honor asylum requests or let them come in, separating families is a bad idea. And we find out that for some of these kids, it isn't clear how to reunite them with their parents. Well, into this gap stepped uh, one of the commercial uh, DNA testing uh, companies, uh, 23andMe, although I think also Ancestry, another big uh, direct-to-consumer genetic testing company, offered to help as well. And they said, look, we'll get these families back together. Maybe we can help. We do DNA testing. Let's test the DNA of the child, get a sample, match it up with the adults and maybe we can help reunite families. Now look, it shouldn't have happened in the first place. We should never have been in a situation where we separated kids from adults and then didn't know where the adults went so that we could get them back together. That's inexcusable. That really was a basic violation of the child's rights. Shouldn't have happened, but there it is. So should we, is it a good idea to take up the offer of DNA testing? I think it's, you know, you have to do what you need to do to get the kids back together. They obviously can't consent to having DNA taken, but I'm not sure I would use one of the commercial direct-to-consumer DNA testing companies to get this reunification done. And I say that for three reasons. One, the companies are really in the business of doing genealogy, but they make a lot of their money by reselling DNA data. They're in the uh, resale business as much as they're in the direct-to-consumer genetic testing business. They're not the right kind of place for privacy, for secrecy, for keeping people's uh, genetic information private. I think maybe it would be better to use an academic genetic testing company near the border, uh, somewhere in uh, Texas or Arizona, New Mexico, one of the academic centers that regularly does genetic testing. They're more familiar with protecting privacy keeping things confidential, not reselling uh, data than some of the commercial companies. If the kids can't consent, they're gonna need that protection. You don't really want their information put into a bigger database that might be used someday to prosecute them or for other purposes that uh, uh, they wouldn't consent to. It's also important to note that the commercial genetic companies don't really offer counseling. If you separate kids from parents, if you separate kids from adults, you're gonna to need to counsel them and you're gonna to need to provide some support. That requires a program that has psychological counseling as uh, easily available. The commercial genetic testing companies, when they test you or me or anybody, send you back uh, kind of a uh, printout and say, talk about this with your doctor. And if you want a counselor, here's the website for the uh, State Genetic Counseling Association in your area. That's not good enough. We need to have counseling in place ready to go, and that leads to the third reason. Why? Because occasionally when you do paternity testing for or with genetics, you find out the person you thought was your mom or your dad isn't. Maybe there was an extramarital affair, something happened, but that isn't your biological parent. And I don't expect that to be frequent or common, but it can happen. When that happens, you're gonna obviously need some serious counseling to help everybody involved figure out what to do and how to proceed. So, genetics as a solution to getting families back together, to getting uh, kids back with the adults 
that uh, might have brought them here? Yes, I do think even without consent, that's worth doing. But outsourcing the job to commercial organizations that really aren't in the paternity testing business, don't have the counseling that you'd want to see go along with this, I'm not sure that's the right uh, entity to take this on. I'm Art Kaplan at the NYU School of Medicine. Thanks for watching.